Here's wishing you all the best of the season and a happy new year for 2024. How did that happen anyway? <laughs> but here we are. So I'm making this video first to thank you all for making 2023 one of the best for this channel. Now I put in a tremendous amount of work this year, but really none of that means much without you. So thanks again for all your encouragement, participation, comments and suggestions. Hi, Ray here. Looking back first at the year that was for Nikon, I'm not sure I can remember everything they gave us this year, but for me, it meant the highly anticipated Z8. And there was no question that I'd buy that camera. And I put my order in as soon as it was released, took possession in May, uh, and I've been using it a lot since then. It's really all the camera I wanted and more. I won't say it's replaced the Z9, that's the A camera here today, but the Z8 is recording B-roll or um, uh, second angle if you like. The video matching is of course excellent because it has all the same options and features as the Z9. But sometimes the Z8 is the camera I'll take on location when weight and size is a concern. Which brings me to the other big camera release of 2023, the ZF. And the ZF isn't just a retro style camera. It's 4K 10-bit video, for instance, is also a great match. All the lovely Nikon color science and the excellent flat profile. Now, someone asked me this week about that profile. Why uh, shouldn't they use the standard profile? And I'll say the same here. If you like the standard profile and think that looks like what you want uh, in your finished image, uh, by all means, use it. Uh, you can, of course, still tweak that. For me, I like the flat profile as a starting point for the uncomplicated grading that I do, but also for more complex grading with color LUTs, Motion VFX, uh, Film Look, or Dehancer Pro. More on that later. I'm talking here about the typical video settings that I'll use, especially for these videos. And that means 10-bit internal video using uh, SDR, not uh, HDR, log, or raw footage, uh, which I won't expand on here. That's as far as I'll go regarding video as well. Except to repeat that these Z system cameras are capable of creating beautiful looking video. <laughs> despite my limited editing skills. Back to the ZF. It's a camera I'd publicly stated here on YouTube. I'd like to see Nikon create a full-frame ZFC, the existing APS-C retro-style camera. But as I said, I also wanted to see a pro version, which to me means a camera that's built to withstand hard use. Not that I <laughs> abuse my cameras, but a camera, I said, built to similar standards as the vintage FM film cameras, the ZFC and now the ZF is designed to look like. I wasn't sure I'd buy the camera if Nikon did make it, but they made it and I couldn't resist. And I'm glad that I did buy it. I'll be making a more complete review based on my personal experience so far in the new year. And that also goes for the 40mm f2 SE lens I bought at the same time. And that's been spending a lot of time attached to the ZF. I recently made my six months with the Z8 video, which I'll link yeah, I'll link it at the end of this video. It seems to be holding its own in the great <laughs> YouTube archive. And if you watch it, you'll see, as I say, I'm pretty darn happy with the camera. Backing up a couple of months to March, I also succumbed to the promises of the Nikkor 85mm f1.2 lens. And really, I've run out of superlatives, but wow, I fell in love with what that lens can produce from the moment that I looked through it. And I'm still finding new ways to make use of its extraordinary rendering quality. Some kind of magic, as I've said before. It's not just the shallow depth of field and creamy bokeh that makes the 85 1.2 special. You don't have to, nor should you always, shoot it wide open, but all that glass is worth the extra weight and size. It's been my go-to portrait lens since last March, nudging out the 105 millimeter. And as anyone who's been around my channel for a while will know, I've always been a fan of 105 millimeters for portraits. Well, I succumbed to the latest Nikkor sensation, the Plena. Well, you never know. 
I had to mention the 135 millimeter f 1.8 s lens. It's not a focal length I've ever taken to or owned, but I can't deny that the results I've seen from the planet are extraordinary. So I bought a lottery ticket this week, <laughs> but the 85 1.2 has certainly been worth the investment. It's not an exaggeration to say that it has brought me more portrait jobs. Individuals and agencies have seen work made with that lens and they want me to create that look for them. Now, now I'm not saying they've overlooked my creativity, but I do have to give at least a little bit of credit to this amazing tool. We've seen the Z 600 millimeter F 6.3 VRS prime and the 180 to 600 millimeter F 5.6 to 6.3 VR. Nikon has really focused, if you will, on the wildlife and sports uh, arena. And I think that's a pretty well rounded lineup now. And I'm very happy with my 400 millimeter F 4.5 lens and the 1.4 and two times teleconverters. I'm planning a follow up video on those optics, but I do hope in 2024, Nikon shifts that focus to other areas. Now, don't get me wrong, I do think they've done an awesome job in the Z lens department. We now have 44 Z mount lenses. That's a pretty spectacular achievement in five years, I'd say. But I know there's a lot of people eager to see that last lonely lens on the soon to be finished roadmap, the 35 millimeter, what we expect to be an F 1.2. Certainly, I'm eager to see what it looks like, even if I won't be able to uh, afford it. But we'll see. That will be a lens I should think that every serious Nikon videographer will want to add to their kit. I have to say, there's always a lens we'd like to buy. And there are vintage F-mount lenses that I'd like to find. And um, as from the beginning, the FTZ adapter opens up a huge world of opportunity there. To my plans for 2024 for this channel, and here I'd welcome any requests for what you'd like to see me cover. Um, directions for the channel, I'm open to suggestion. Now I can't guarantee you I'll adopt all of them, but I'll definitely consider all ideas and requests. YouTube is hard. <laughs> You've probably heard that before because really it's true. To do well, it takes an incredible amount of work. It can become a full-time occupation, but without the re rewards one would expect from a full-time job. Now, I'm not complaining because YouTube uh, has its rewards for sure. Most importantly, it's connected me uh, with a few very good friends in the photography community. And yes, it has its financial rewards as modest as they are at this point. And no shame in that, despite the strange idea from some quarters that making money debases one's work and brings into question one's integrity. Well, that's another subject that I may delve into more deeply next year, <laughs> though I've been avoiding it for a couple of years now. Nothing wrong with a little controversy, though, eh? No, for the most part, making these videos is a very positive experience. For my creative life, it's, it's added, I think, a whole new dimension in terms of learning and, I hope, sharing what I learn on my journey. And at least as a photographer now entering my 43rd year, in the business since I turned my hobby into a job. And now as I find my work more in demand than it's been for a while. Yeah, yeah, I tried to retire, but the adventure continues. So I just want to take a moment to address those who, for whatever reason, don't appreciate my work or what I do here. As they say, you can't please all of the people all of the time. In fact, I suspect some people really aren't pleased <laughs> any of the time, at least not by my photos. Some people are pleased by bringing down others or the tone of any conversation. I'm not here to please them. Here's the thing. I've displeased art directors, uh, whole advertising agencies and individual clients, people who matter. Now, I delete most of the useless insults that come with making one's work, ideas and opinions public on social media. But I do leave up the occasional example of incivility and resentment, just so the authors can enjoy <laughs> their moment of glory. Okay, upward and onward. But I do want to make it clear how much I enjoy hearing from viewers who share their thoughts civilly and in the spirit of advancing our mutual love of photography. And I'm open to criticism where warranted. I'm not too old to learn or to be 
corrected when I'm wrong. Sometimes I get things wrong. But what keeps photography fresh and exciting for me is learning. Learning how to use new tools, learning new techniques, challenging myself to see in new ways or to adapt old ideas and visions using new technology. It's interesting. I'm often approached for work because the client likes something I did three decades ago and they want that look. I tell them I won't guarantee that exact look. Uh, perhaps I won't shoot film, for instance, but that I'll bring all that experience, all those concepts to bear on what I do today. I don't necessarily want to recreate exactly something I did in the past, so looking to the future, to 2024, I'm excited to explore new ideas here and in my photography and video work. Well, there's so much more I could think of to talk about. Firmware, for instance, <laughs> I don't have any privileged uh, info. I'm just getting the same rumors as everyone else. I think there will be more for the Z9, Z8, certainly the ZF. As for the rumored uh, Z63, I don't know. I will go public with my opinion <laughs> that dual X-Speed 7 processors that's uh, something unlikely to be a thing. I hope to have the time to dedicate to something a bit more creative in the way of video using the tools I have at hand, plugins and apps that I've introduced in the past. And that's where balancing the demands of client work and YouTube, that'll be the challenge. I'll also need to fit in some time to take care of the engine of all these endeavors me. So I've recently undergone some routine diagnostic procedures and no worries, the results were encouraging. But I will be, again, in January, undergoing some preemptive facial surgery that I'm hoping won't interrupt my schedule here too much, though I may look a bit different when I return. In the way of gear reviews, well, that's another demand that I have to balance in the short term. Look for new lighting options, power solutions, uh, lenses, media. There's a lot of amazing creative tools and accessories that I'm excited to showcase in the new year that I hope will help you realize your dreams. That's really what photography has been uh, for me all along. The visual arts have always inspired me. The works of great photographers and filmmakers, and I really should say uh, painters and sculptors, all the arts, including dance and music, have made my life more enjoyable, softened the edges of hard times and elevated really the, the best times to what I might call ecstatic, joyful places. They've enriched my life. And as I look forwards to 2024, and there's no sugarcoating the fact that there is ugliness in the world, the thing that I've been thinking a lot about these last few months is that I want to try to add a bit of light, capture some of the beauty left to us those of us lucky enough to find that beauty and to share something positive. That's what I want to accomplish in 2024. And I wish for you light and beauty for the year ahead. And I have to say, here in the Northern Hemisphere, these are my favorite months in that respect. I mean, I can shoot at noon <laughs> without being called the mad dog or <laughs> an Englishman. Um, I guess the last title I'm happy to accept. Anyway, I'm sure 2024 is going to be a good one for all photographers. A very happy new year to you all. I'll see you next year. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give it the old thumbs up. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see what I have in store next year, please do consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. In the meantime, take care. Cheers. And we'll see you later in 2024.